and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com, where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. If you'd like to support our show, please use our Amazon affiliate link below. Today we have a plant care video for variegated Cretan break fern. This is a beautiful fern that really lights up your indoor garden, as you can tell by looking at it, I'm sure. This fern is from the terrace genus of plants that includes many fern species, most of which are native to Europe, Asia, and parts of Africa. This one is Terrace cretica, and the cultivar is Albo linnata. The plant has fronds like many types of ferns, but in this case they are variegated with creamy white centers, as you can see here, outlined in a beautiful, lovely shade of green. I absolutely love the color, the green color of this plant. It is so eye-catching. Terras cretica has an upright clumping growth habit and reaches eight to 24 inches tall and one to two feet wide in the indoor garden, depending on your growing conditions. The plant is fairly easy to keep healthy and happy in your indoor garden if you keep up the following growing conditions in mind. Lighting. Break fern thrives in indirect bright to medium light. Avoid direct sun on this plant as it will quickly burn the foliage and also dry it out, which the plant doesn't like. So don't place it near a hot western or southern window that, hasn't, that, that haven't been covered by blinds or curtains. So some protection on those windows. Eastern exposure and bright unobstructed northern exposures can work really well. Brake fern also does well under full spectrum lighting, which should be used if the light levels in your home are low and during lower light times of the year, such as the winter months when you can supplement with the full spectrum lighting. I do have videos on full spectrum lighting. I will put links below for any videos I mention in this video and any related videos that will help you with your care of your beautiful brake fern. Okay, so watering. Water brake fern regularly and avoid letting the plant dry out. If it dries out, you will get a bunch of brown fronds that will need to be removed. And hopefully it hasn't dried out too much where the plant doesn't make it. The plant will generally come back after being droughted if it wasn't too badly droughted. But that can take some time for the plant to look really pretty once again. So try to avoid droughting your plant at all costs. Cretan brake fern will slowly will slow down growth in the winter months, at which time you can pull back a bit on watering though. So you don't need your you, your frequency at that time will slow down. Do make sure to check the plant with a moisture meter and don't let the soil get any lower than four at any time. So when you insert the moisture meter into the first inch of soil or so, it should not go any lower than four. If it gets into the three, it's too dry. So water, when it's around the four, uh, could be even be in the five a little bit. Uh, as mentioned, you just don't want these to, to dry out. However, do not have them continuously soggy because that will lead to root rot in any plant, even plants like this plant that like some moisture. Always use warm water when you water house plants. Uh, as, I, um, as I mention in other videos and I often mention. Okay, so the next thing, fertilizing. Fertilize break fern monthly, spring through fall with an organic fertilizer. Chemical fertilizers are way too harsh for this plant and many house plants. I generally don't recommend them. They can cause crispy leaf edges on break fern and brown leaf tips. Low humidity can also do that, but if you are keeping your humidity up and you see those sorts of things on your brake fern and you have used a chemical fertilizer, then that is probably fertilizer burn. And for chemical fertilizers, I do have videos on this, but I will mention briefly the, to, to be able to, um, to uh, know if a fertilizer is chemical, the NPK ratio, those three numbers on the bag or bottle are going to be pretty high. So generally something like 15, 15, 15, 20, 20, 20, 30, 30, 30, those are usually chemical fertilizers. 
Okay, so don't uh, so look for organic fertilizers, things that are um, have um, a low NPK, three two two, two two two, uh, five five five, that sort of thing. I do have a my green gourmet houseplant food, which is an, an totally organic fertilizer. I will put a link below for that, as well as other organic fertilizers for you. So um, and as mentioned. Um, do that monthly spring through fall for fertilizing and then don't fertilize in the winter months when the plant slows down growth. It's not going to be processing that fertilizer and you don't want the fertilizer just sitting there. So if you are concerned about maybe giving the plant a little more micronutrients during the winter months, uh, and it, it won't hurt if you like to love your plants and you want to give them something in the winter months, you can enrich the soil by top dressing. Uh, top dressing means to add on top of the soil and I have videos on, on top dressing. You can top dress with worm compost uh, about once during the winter months and you can do it every, every three or four months throughout the year. So the worm compost and I have videos on how great worm compost is for your plants Worm compost will make the soil more biologically active, which is really good for the fern, uh, especially, um, especially ferns, but all houseplants. But ferns really like that extra biological activity in, in their soil. So that's something that you can do, uh, as I mentioned, any time of the year, and it's very helpful uh, for the plant, giving the plant some, some added fertilizer, even in the winter when you don't want to be using other types of fertilizer. It has micronutrients in it, so it's not a big, um, a big dump of something like um, nitrogen, which is used for growth, which plants use when they're actively growing. Okay, so humidity. Like many ferns, Cretan break fern does best in fairly high humidity, ideally between 50 to 60 percent humidity. Uh, you can check the humidity in your house and especially you want to do it near the plant with a hygrometer. I will put a link below for hygrometers and I've done videos on how important they are. They will tell you tell within seconds the humidity uh, surrounding your plants. Okay, so 50 to 60 percent humidity ideal as I mentioned. If you need to increase the humidity, um, then you can do so with a variety of methods. I will link some of those methods below and mention them now. So a humidity tray is great, regular hum misting of the plant. Um, and the, you can also, if you've got real low humidity, use a humidifier to keep these plants looking happy and healthy. And I have a video on that as well. And another thing to keep in mind is grouping plants raises the humidity for all of the plants because hum plants humidify the air around them. So plants will humidify each other. So the more plants you have, the more, the more humid that area is going to be. And you can test that, as I mentioned, with a hygrometer in the areas where you have more plants, you're going to see higher humidity levels. Also placing the plant, if there's enough light, in a bathroom where the humidity goes up and down it's at, at certain times of the day can also help. And as mentioned, misting too. Okay, so the next thing that you wanna keep in mind to keep these beauties happy and healthy is temperature. Cretan fern does not like to get cold. An ideal temperature range is between 65 degrees Fahrenheit and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. It can dip to 60 now and then for short periods, but any lower for long and any lower and for any long and long periods of time at, at those low temperatures, the plant is going to protest by dropping leaves and looking generally unhappy and cranky. So you want to keep the plant um, ideally, like I said, in the, that sweet range of 20, 65 to, to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, so move it around your house. A great thing about the hygrometers that I mentioned is they, the, uh, every hygrometer has on it uh, a reading for humidity and a reading for Fahrenheit because relative humidity means that the, what the humidity is relative to the temperature. So all of those hygrometers have a nice 
um, a, a, a nice temperature gauge on it too so you can you can quickly check humidity and temperature at the same time and they're very cost effective as well okay so the temperature keep it you do what you do what you need to do to get that that plant into a warmer area of the house however you don't want it in front of any drafty conditions either hot or cold so like from open windows or forced hair air heating or air conditioning so sometimes people will think okay it's too cold in my house i'm going to go put it in front of the in front of the um in front of my my uh forced air heating please don't that will dry it out the humidity will be very low there and it it's not good for the plant um, something with a gentle heat coming off of it is fine radiators if, if it's not too close is okay but not that that air the air blowing on them because it will dry out the air although any heating is or air conditioning is going to dry out the air so you're going to have to watch the humidity in that case okay repotting you want to repot this beautiful brake fern when it has surpassed my rule of thumb, which is two third plant to one third pot. Now in this combo here, we're doing okay. Um, there's actually, this is actually in a little bit smaller pot within this beautiful catch pot. So it's still in the two thirds, one third um, dy uh, dynamic there. So, but when it, when it surpasses, when you have three quarters plant to one quarter pot that means the pot has gotten too small and at that point you would repot the plant you want to repot break fern spring through mid-summer use a high quality organic potting soil that retains moisture yet drains well you can also, as mentioned, mulch with worm compost, and you can add worm compost to the potting soil when you repot it as well. It, um, I am right now taping in midsummer. It, when this comes out, it may be a little too late uh, to to repot. You might have to wait till till next um, next year, depending on where you live and depending on your climate. If you're in a warmer climate, you can it it you can often repot a little bit later uh, but when you have those in you're in a climate where winter comes in quickly then you want to watch it okay pruning this plant doesn't need much pruning to keep it looking good and uh, you want to cut out fronds when they're when they're browned when they're done and you would do that at the base of the plant with sharp pruning shears or sharp shears or sharp scissors so, but that's about it. It just, it, it pretty much, it's pretty easy in that category in terms of not needing a lot of pruning. It just really grows on its own very well. Pests and diseases for this beauty. Root rot can occur if you overwater, as mentioned. The, the plant can also occasionally get mealy bugs. You can treat them with isopropyl alcohol 91% and make sure you're growing them correctly because sickly plants tend to attract pests. The, the mealybugs, the, these, uh, these fronds, however, are a, a little on the papery side, so the mealybugs aren't as big of a fan of these plants as they are of some other plants, so it's not a huge problem. They aren't a big mealybug magnet, but if you do, as mentioned, get some, treat it right away with isopropyl alcohol and rinse, and I have videos on getting rid of mealybugs as well, which, is, which are one of the most common pests, indoor pests. Okay, so there you go. How to keep this beautiful brake fern, Terrace Credica, happy and healthy in your indoor garden. Thank you for stopping by today. Please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And please check the bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos are released.